Third grade students across Oklahoma are in the middle of high stakes reading tests this month. At the Capitol, the House and Senate are closing in on a two year reprieve that will not automatically require retention of students who fail reading sufficiency tests. In its original form, House Bill 2625 would have eliminated automatic retention of third graders, but would allow teams of educators and parents to decide whether to promote the child to fourth grade. The revised bill gives schools two more years to put a plan in place to bring poor readers up to grade level. Hi. Third graders across the state began taking the high stakes reading test this month. Sand Springs Angus Valley Elementary conducted its testing on April 15th. My son took the test today and he really wasn't that nervous about it. He's a good student and that's more his personality, but we weren't nervous about it. I knew he'd do well. Master tree climber and third grader Jabe Schleyhuber wasn't phased by the testing either. How was the test today? Um, good, because I know I aced it. <laughs> you know you aced it? So you weren't worried? Were other kids worried? Jabe's mother is a teacher at Angus Valley Elementary, yes. and she knows that for other children, test day was filled with dread. Stress, anxiety, not being able to sleep at night, um, just sickness over worrying about the test and worrying about the stigma that would come with, with uh, not being able to pass it, for sure. On the day the Angus Valley students were tested, failure meant an automatic repeat of the third grade. Did she take the test today? No, ma'am, she did not take the test today. Why not? Um, I totally don't agree with the test, and so I made a stand. Um, she's been stressed about it all year long. She's had um, nightmares, she's had nosebleeds, she has anxiety. So from day one, I said she was not gonna take this test, and so she's known all year she was not gonna take the test. And while very few opted out their children from testing, many parents and educators don't like the third grade reading retention law. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking teachers to be accountable, and I don't think there's anything wrong with asking um, students to show what they know, but I think the high stakes testing as young as eight and nine years old is ridiculous. Um, I think it's not developmentally appropriate, it's not um, age appropriate, and it's putting way too much pressure on them at such a young age. In its original form, House Bill 2625 would leave retention and promotion decisions to a committee at each school. State Representative Katie Henke is the bill's author. I think that the most important part is that you know the people that are closest to the child are going to have a say in that process and that was really what this bill was all about. We wanted to make sure that teachers and parents were going to have have a say because they're the ones that know the children best. Henke's bill sailed through the House but was amended in the Senate. Gary Stanislawski is the Senate author. He says lawmakers left intact the establishments of school committees to review third graders reading progress. The committee uh, will look at those limited knowledge, they've never had to do this before, and determine what extra effort does a school and parents and, and programs what extra effort interventions summer school are going to be given to those limited knowledge to get those up to speed too. Previously, we, we kind of left those kids behind. But he says the revised bill only eliminates automatic retention for this year's and next year's third graders. In two years, the committee will no longer be able to promote children reading at a second grade level. The ones that re score unsatisfactory, that all year on the assessments have said that they were not reading at grade level, they can no longer promote them. Sherry Durkee is the Director of Instructional Services at Sand Springs Public Schools. She says they are always evaluating children's reading progress and that retention of poor readers in third grade is too late. A retention decision has come about, not often, but some because we're trying to make the best choice for kids. I will tell you it's not at third grade though. If we're in an intervention team talking about reading and, and looking at intervention being a possibility as a good strategy for a kid or student, it's not going to be in third grade. It's going to be when they're in first grade or in kindergarten, when they're younger, so that they reap the benefits of repeating the instruction. Stanislawski says the eventual mandatory requirement is needed to give local educators more authority. If you were to interview third grade teachers and say, how many would you have recommended to be held back, but the parent wanted their child to move forward, and then they struggled the next year? Probably quite a few. Representative Henke believes her House colleagues can live with the Senate amendments for now. 
My colleagues, what they're most concerned about is um, having the governor sign it into law so that it can take effect for the students this year. Hinkie says while the bill may not be perfect in its amended form, she believes the two-year reprieve on retention gives lawmakers an opportunity to revise the law again. That does give us time to see how it's going to look, how it's going to work in our school districts um, and make sure that those um, intensive remediation programs and um, you know, one-on-one -on -one reading that make sure all of those programs are working and, and that students are getting the services they need to be successful. Some school superintendents and school board members who visited with lawmakers at the Capitol this week want to know where the money is coming from to pay for intensive remediation programs and reading specialists. They believe schools are being required to do more with so much less as it stands now. We think it's important, number one, that our public schools be properly funded, that be, we be returned to levels that existed around 2008 before the economic downturn. Funding for education and many other issues that affect schools have yet to be decided by lawmakers this session. House Bill 2625, though, is expected to be sent to the governor's office next week.